Lesson 20, I will solve division problems without remainders using the area model. So today we're going to solve some division problems that do not have remainders, and we're going to use a new strategy called the area model. In your math journal, I want you to write today's date, lesson 20, divide using area model. We're going to do a couple of problems in your math journal before we do our problem set. So first of all, I want you to notice that I have two rectangles drawn here. I have one that has an area of 48 square units and a width of 4 units, and I don't know the length. And then <clears throat> I want you to draw this first rectangle in your math journal, the 48, um, the area of 48 with a width of 4. And then I also want you to, below that, I want you to draw the same, the same rectangle, but we're going to divide it to two parts. So we've got 40 and we have 8. So if you remember, to find the area of a rectangle, we're going to do length times width. So in this case, we have the area which is 40, and we have the width, so we're trying to figure out the length. So in your journal, beside your two um, area models, I also want you to draw a number bond, exactly like that one I have here, with 48 at the top as your hole, and then 40 at 8 as the parts. So we're going to find the unknown length side lengths of the smaller rectangles, and by smaller rectangles, I mean these. So if this is 40, I think to myself, what times 4 equals 40, and that would be 10. 40 divided by 10 is, or 4 is 10. And then 8, remember this is still 4. So 8 divided by 4 would be 2. So I have a length of 10 and a length of 2. My two rectangles, I have the length of 11 and the length of 12. I put those together, I get, uh, excuse me, 10 and 2. I put those together, I get 12. So 48 divided by 4 would be 12. All right, we're going to write that as a number sentence right underneath our number bond. So I want you to write 40 divided by 4, and that's 10, plus 8 divided by 4, which is 2, and together that equals 12. So 48 divided by 4 is 12. Okay? Now, I want you to draw this same rectangle again, just like we did before, 48 with a width of 4. But this time, we're going to partition 48 a little bit differently. Instead of doing 40 and 8, we're going to do 20, 20, and 8. And we still have a width of 4. I want you to draw this. Then we're going to find the length of each of these smaller rectangles. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 8 divided by 4 is 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want you to write this number bond. Then I want you to write 20 divided by 4 plus 20 divided by 4, plus 8 divided by 4, so we have 5 plus 5 plus 2 equals 12. Okay, we could do this another way too, but we're not going to do it any more ways. But there are several other ways that you could partition this same rectangle into smaller numbers that are divisible by 4, and you would still get 48 divided by 4 is 12. So, get your problem set. I want you to write your name at the top, and we're going to practice a little bit of this on our problem set. Okay, so we have Alfonso solved a division problem by drawing an area model. Look at the area model. What pro division problem did Alfonso solve? So I'm looking and he has two rectangles and he divided it into 40 and 32. So if I put those together, I get 72. So Alfonso solved 72 divided by 4. And that equals 10 plus 8, which is 18. Show a number bond to represent Alfonso's area model. Start with the total and then show how the total is split into two parts. Below the two parts represent the total length using the distributive property and then solve. So we have 72 is our total and we divided that into 40 and 32. Well actually we didn't, Alfonso did. And then I'm going to have to make this a little bit bigger or whenever I write this you're not going to be able to read it. So let me go in here and make this a little bit bigger or you're not going to be able to see it. Okay, so I've got 40. If I look back up here at my rectangle, he was divided by 4. So I've got 40 divided by 4 and I've got 32 divided by 4. So 40 divided by 4 is 10, 32 divided by 4 is 8, and 10 plus 8 would be 18. Okay, this is the distributive property. Whenever you are taking something, you're dividing it by the same number and then adding it together. You're like distributing, dividing by 4 because you're doing it 
to both numbers. Solve 45 divided by 3 using an area model. Draw a number bond and use a distributive property to solve for the unknown length. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a rectangle. I'm going to cheat a little bit and make my rectangle look nice and neat like this so that you can read it. And then I have to think to myself, okay, what are some numbers that I can use to divide by 3? Because I know my width is 3. Now, in the past, we've done 10s and 1s. But the issue with that is 40 cannot be divided by 3. And 5 cannot be divided by 3. So that's not going to work. So I'm thinking to myself, what's a number that's pretty big that can be divisible by 3? And I'm thinking, hmm, well, I know 30 is divisible by 3. And then 30 plus 15 equals 45. And 15 can be divided by 3 also. So if I did 30 divided by 3, that would be 10. And 15 divided by 3, that would be 5. So 45 divided by 3 would be 15. So I'm going to draw a number bond. So I've got 45. You might be able to come up with another way to divide 45 into numbers that are divisible by 3. This is just the first thing that came to me. So I've got 30 and I've got 15. So now I'm going to show the distributive property. 30 divided by 3 in parentheses plus 15 divided by 3 in parentheses. So this would be 10 plus 5. So it would 15. All right, solve 64 divided by 4 using an area model. Draw a number bond to show how you partition the area and represent the division with a written method. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing that we just did. I'm going to draw another rectangle. Again, I'm going to cheat a little bit so that it's nice and neat and you can read it. Okay, now I've got to think of what are some numbers that equal 64 but can be divided by 4. Again, I cannot just do 60 and 4 because 60 is not divisible by 4. I could do 40. I'm thinking 40. And then I could do, let's see, what would be left over? 24 would be left over, and that can be divided by 4 also. 40 divided by 4 is 10. 24 divided by 4 is 6. Together, that equals 16. So using my number bond, I would have 64. I partitioned this into two groups, 40 and 24, because together they equal 64. 40 divided by 4 plus 24 divided by 4. That's a distributive property. I have 10 plus 6, and that would be 16. So 64 divided by 4 would equal 16. <coughs> Now I've got 92 divided by 4. Use an area model. Explain using words, pictures, or numbers the connection of the distributive property to the area model. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my rectangle right here. And I'm going to think to myself, hmm, how can I take 92 and put it into numbers that are divisible by 4 and still equal 90? Well, I'm thinking to myself, I can't do 90 and 2. That wouldn't work this time. But I could do 80 because I know 8 can be divided by 4, and that would leave 12. 80 and 12 are 92. 80 divided by 4 would be 20. 12 divided by 4 would be 3. So 92 divided by 4 would be 23. Okay, so I'm going to... Finish this problem right down here underneath of my area model. It doesn't say I have to draw a number bond, so I'm not going to this time. But I have here 80 divided by 4 plus 12 divided by 4. 80 divided by 4 is 20 plus 12 divided by 4 is 3, so I get 23. So now it says explain using words, pictures, or numbers the connection between the distributive property and the area model. So I've chosen to do words. So I have here, we use the area model to show how we break apart a hole into pieces that make it easier to divide. The distributive property shows how the hole is broken apart. So here's our distributive property. It shows how I took 92 and broke it into 80 plus 12. All right, we have one more problem to do. All right, we have 
72 divided by 6 use an area model and the standard algorithm. So we're going to kind of combine the, couple, the things that we've been doing for the last couple of days. So I'm going to start right here with a nice big area model. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I divide 72 into numbers that are divisible by 6? Um, my first thought is 60. And then what would be left over is 12. Both of these numbers can be divided by 6, and together they do equal 72. So I've got 60 divided by 6, which is 10. 12 divided by 6, which is 2. So 60 divided by 6 plus 12 divided by 6 gives me 10 plus 2, which equals 12. Now I'm going to use standard algorithm. So 72 divided by 6. This is also called long division, remember. So I'm going to divide my 10s. And 7 tens divided by 6 will be 1 minus 6 leaves a remainder of 1 ten. I add that to my two ones. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 2 times 6 is 12. I have no remainder. So here's my standard algorithm, and here's my area model. The toughest part of area model is trying to come up with numbers that can be divided by 6. And this is where it's really important to know your multiplication facts. If you are still struggling with your multiplication facts, this could be a good place for you to use your multiplication chart that is in your that's in your agenda and you can be looking for numbers that are divisible by six all you have to do is look in the six column and you'll see all the numbers that can be divided by six or if you're trying to do seven or if you're trying to do eight so remember you have that resource if you're struggling but again this would be a whole lot easier if you memorize your facts